On behalf of the Southwest Ontario Aboriginal Health Access Centre board and staff and the Provincial Health Services Authority in British Columbia, we invite you to participate in the Indigenous Cultural Safety Training Program. The training is an online eight module training program that's facilitated and also has the support of elders. And the mental health training is four modules, which is also facilitated and is supported with an elder. And this training gives you a depth to, to that knowledge. No matter how aware you are of some of the issues in history, this takes your awareness to a whole new level. For me, it wasn't just about you know, knowing the facts. It wasn't just about a deeper understanding of history. It was about being able to understand that other perspective, what it must be like, or at least start to see what it must be like for somebody who's, you know, not learning about these in a textbook, but really living them every day of their lives. I think it's, it's uh, really important for people to take this training because it gives them an opportunity to open up their insight into a world that's relatively unknown to them, I think. The world of uh, Indigenous people in Canada is kept pretty well silent, you know, like across the masses, especially within the context of the media, within the context of the, um, of the uh, schools. There's, there is plenty of information that they'll learn that will help them in the future. I think that this training is one of the most important things that we can do to address that and to live up to our values, to be able to provide care that's free from stereotyping, free from discrimination, and make sure that in this country, all people have access to high quality health care, regardless of their racial identity. I think the motivating factor is that all of us go into health care because we want to help people. But the problem is we have this epidemic of stereotyping and assumptions of Aboriginal people in our society, and it's actually challenges our ability as health care providers to provide the very equitable uh, discrimination-free care that we all aspire to. You know, people have asked questions about why do we need to do this work? Isn't, aren't there enough programs already? One of the things that I talk about and I say is that if this worked for Indigenous people, it would have worked already. We've had nothing but indicators to show us that the status quo is not working. We have to do something different. This program is part of a movement. This is just a small step to building the bridge, to re-establishing the cultural integrity, to, uh, to treating uh, Native First Na and First Nations people the way we should have been treating them all along. I see a role for this training for anyone that has patient contact in the healthcare system. I also think that it is crucial that leaders within the healthcare system take this sort of training because, again, it's not just at the individual level that we need to be changing our behavior, it's at the institutional level. I'm somebody that works in the healthcare system. I really believe in what the healthcare system does. Some of the most difficult f things for me to learn about in this, uh, in this training was, were the things about what has the system actually done in the past? What was institutionalized about the racism, about the, you know, the, attempts to impact First Nations cultures. I mean, we all know that there's racism and that some people treat others poorly sometimes. But when it's institutionalized, it, it's, a, it's a whole different issue and it's a whole different level of, I think, responsibility that we have as society to try and address it. A lot of my research with uh, people working in the hospital have been that they are uncertain how to approach that uh, interaction with an Aboriginal client because they are afraid of asking the wrong questions or saying the wrong things uh, for those who are more conscious about uh, trying to have a positive relationship. And so it provides people with the tools to have a better understanding of what are the right questions to ask and how to develop a good relationship of trust between the patient and the care provider. So the ICS training program is really an opportunity for care providers to improve the way that they deliver services. I think many of us had no idea about, you know, the Indian hospitals before maybe a year or two ago and things really started to come out in the media. But as somebody who's in the healthcare system, it is incredibly important to know about that history and to try and figure out and understand how it might be impacting 
the way First Nations and, and Native uh, people experience the healthcare system now. Okay, from, from my experiences, uh, being part of the facilitation uh, group, uh, I was exposed to uh, the training uh, from an uh, insider's perspective, being part of the, the ICS group facilitation. And so that it required me to take extensive training through our uh, British Columbia partners around the stereotypes, around discrimination, around um, racism. And the learning curve was substantial. And uh, to be quite honest, it was the hardest learning in a very short amount of time that I've ever been faced with in my life. Well, I believe that Indigenous cultural safety training is really part of a, a larger program. We provide uh, a foundational training, so this means people are going to learn about issues they've probably never learned about before. I think this sort of training can really generate the sort of empathy needed to treat people with, with respect and also to honour, you know, what is really human in them, not just the illness or whatever they're presenting. The ICS training has the ability to help you decolonize your mind um, in order to empower not only yourself but to empower Aboriginal people or Indigenous people that are coming to you for service. Far too often we find that providers are simply addressing the burden of disease and illness, whereas we know much of it is influenced through the social determinants of health. This means our opportunity for having impact on health outcomes is minimal. We recognize that it's the responsibility of the healthcare system itself to ensure that all health providers, professionals, organizations are practicing culturally safe care for Indigenous people. As LINs, we can help drive this expectation across the system and influence the standard of care so that all people, regardless of their race or culture, receive a high quality of culturally safe care. What we're finding is that the Indigenous cultural safety training programs in Ontario and in British Columbia is actually uh, filling a gap in a Canadians' education about Indigenous people, about our shared history, and about uh, w most recent history around residential schools and the 60s scoop. These are all things that are missing from the curriculum in Canadian schools. It allows us, people working in healthcare, to see that there's a lot more to it than just you know that individual interaction, what is happening today for this person. There's a whole set of experiences and assumptions and history really that on which that interaction is built. You know, people often ask me, you know, is it working? Um, are you seeing any changes? Are you hopeful? And I have to say, when I first started doing this work, I was feeling really overwhelmed. I saw the enormity of the challenge. I saw attitudes, I saw behaviors. that are so concerning. But after training so many thousands of people, I have to say that when I look at the feedback, when I look at the post-training questionnaires, it's, it's all about hope. It's about people saying, I'm transformed. Oh my gosh, I can't believe what I didn't know. So I, I have to be hopeful, and I am. But we have work to do.